CNN continues to flounder in a sea of bad ratings, and FBI Director Christopher Wray shows his contempt of Congress by withholding parts of the Biden bribery scheme document. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee with your June 7th edition of The Breakdown. Now, before we get started, if you get to the end of the video and you like it, I hope you'll leave a like and click the subscribe button below. And before we get to the big news of the day, a quick update. CNN's attempts to become a legitimate news network again, well, they're floundering. Conservatives still don't trust them, while liberals just feel betrayed at not being fed the DNC narrative 24-7. It doesn't help that they still can't handle the truth, as evidenced by the way they tried to mark the third anniversary of the Black Lives Matter Antifa George Floyd riots by praising their own coverage of them as unflinching, unrelenting, uncut. That is peaceful protesting, trying to stick to the message. And, you know, we're going to back up just a little bit here. Our producer got hit. All right, all right. Our producer got hit by some sort of projectile right there. We're going to back up here. Yeah, that's totally peaceful, right? Their own producer gets hit by a projectile. This is more like unbelievable. Well, in case you forgot, it was CNN that gave us the concept and the eternal internet meme about fiery, but mostly peaceful protest. Brad Slager at Red State coined the perfect phrase for this total rewrite of CNN's history of riot coverage. He calls it tear gas lighting. By the way, there's a big shakeup at CNN announced this morning. Chris Licht is licked. He's gone. He's out. Nobody is really that surprised. Chris Licht actually tried to bring CNN into the mainstream, get them back into a more news-focused organization. That didn't sit too well, not only with the CNN personnel who wants to be a left-wing voice, but it didn't sit too well with the viewers of CNN, a very small number, by the way, and ever so declining, who was just outraged that CNN would dare try to bring some balance to their otherwise utterly unbalanced and biased network. So goodbye, Chris. Nice try. I'm sure they'll bring somebody in that hates half of America like Jeff Zucker did when he ran the place. Now for an update on the Biden bribery scheme document. I'm going to give you the good news first. FBI Director Christopher Wray did show up on Capitol Hill this week as scheduled, and he had the Form 1023 that House Oversight and Accountability Committee Chairman James Comer had subpoenaed. Now the bad, though thoroughly unsurprising news. He still refused to turn it over to the committee. Only Comer as chairman and Maryland Representative Jamie Raskin who was invited by the FBI to join him as the Democrat ranking member, only the two of them were allowed to view it in a SCIF, which stands for Sensitive Compartmented Information Facility. Comer was limited to note-taking, and as it turns out, they didn't get to see or take notes on the full document. Touching on one of Comer's biggest concerns, part of the document had indeed been classified. They were told this during a briefing. And it's not clear if even Comer and Raskin were allowed to see the classified parts. So now Comer says he'll start hearings on Thursday, which is tomorrow, to hold Ray in contempt of Congress. The FBI again refused to hand over the unclassified record to the custody of the House Oversight Committee. And we will now initiate contempt of Congress hearings this Thursday. Given the severity and complexity of the allegations contained within this record, Congress must investigate further. Well, this leaves us with new questions. When were the so-called classified parts of the document designated as classified? Before or after the whistleblower was known to have spoken to Congress about it? Before or after it was subpoenaed? And how high a level of classification does this material carry? So high that even Comer? As Oversight Committee Chair doesn't have a high enough security clearance to view it, Comer has said he'd already seen the document. Did he see the parts that are now classified? Reporters, too, had questions for Comer after the briefing was over. One asked, why do you need the document at hand? You just got a chance to view it. Why move forward with contempt when the FBI says they're cooperating in good faith? Here's what Comer had to say about that. Let's just look at what, what I've read in a lot of the media accounts uh, and, and with statements that Ian Sams has made from the White House that, you know, there's no merit to this. This is crazy. This is a conspiracy theory. And, and I'm, you're just supposed to take my word or, or, or the FBI's word. I'm supposed to take the FBI's word that they're investigating this. 
Now, one major takeaway from all this, the FBI did not disprove or discredit the document. What Jamie Raskin calls an unverified tip sheet is actually the product of a highly trusted confidential source who had been paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by the FBI for his extremely reliable information. The contempt charge won't have legal ramifications because Biden's DOJ are never going to press charges, but it may help provide grounds for obtaining the form. It also helps get the overall story about Biden's alleged corruption and criminality all out in the open. Even though the date on the document was dated June 2020, there were notes in it that went all the way back to 2017. Now, that's leading Comer to believe that the FBI's confidential human source, or CHS, initially informed them of the bribery scheme in 2017. His question to the FBI was that given that this CHS is one of their most highly credible, what exactly have you done with this accusation? Their answer to him was that this is part of an ongoing investigation. That's what they say when they want to keep a lid on something. They won't give him any details on what investigation it is, when it began, nothing at all. It seems clear that Comer is over the target. As for the document being partially classified and purportedly being used in an ongoing FBI investigation to keep it under wraps, legal analyst Margot Cleveland offers this take. The real focus regarding this document is not so much the bribery allegation itself, but what, if anything, the FBI did to investigate it, given that the CHS was so highly credible. She sees Ray continuing to fight Senator Grassley and the oversight committees every step of the way to prevent them from revealing this. America can survive selective injustices, says Cleveland, but it cannot withstand a corrupt bureaucracy that obstructs justice and interferes with elections. And if they did bury this allegation, it certainly is yet another example of election interference. The whistleblower who came forward about this document told the Oversight Committee that FBI headquarters had closed it out, even though some of the details had been verified and others could have been. Not only does this evidence suggest FBI headquarters obstructed justice, according to Cleveland, but the date of the source's report, June 30, 2020, indicates those responsible for misbranding the intel as disinformation sought to interfere with the 2020 election. Contrast this with what happened after the FBI got tip from an Australian diplomat that some low-level Trump volunteer had claimed the Russians possessed dirt on Hillary Clinton. Within days, they had opened crossfire hurricane against the Trump campaign. Senator Ted Cruz put very well why it's important for Christopher Wray to release this document. The FBI works for the American people. The American people have a right to have accountability to know, is there evidence that Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., the president of the United States, was personally involved in bribery from a foreign nation? Don't protect the career partisans in DOJ. Instead, put the public good above parochial concerns. The American people deserve to know what is the evidence that Joe Biden was personally involved with bribery. I would reiterate that we deserve to see the document. The CHS was paid hundreds of thousands of dollars of our money to give them information. We paid for it. Let's see it. Well, thanks for watching. And if you found this video informative and want to see more like it, just subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell below. Be sure to tune in to the live stream with Mike, that's me, this Friday. I'll cover more of the news and answer your questions, so be sure and join us. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, you can always sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com, delivered to your email inbox twice a day. It's totally free. That'll do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.